Hi everyone, I'm Dana Ponsky from Dana Ponsky Consulting Services and your guide to college. With Nicole Wahlberg, we do 20 minute tips and topics and welcome to this week's topic of transferring colleges or deferring admission. Hi everybody, I'm Nicole Wahlberg. It's really great to be here with you and to talk to you today about transferring colleges and deferring admission. A little bit of background about me before I get started. For those of you who haven't been with us before, um, I'm an independent educational consultant that works in the San Antonio metropolitan area, San Antonio, Texas specifically. And I work with freshmen, transfer students, and then also students who are interested in taking a gap year, military families, and really anybody looking to make a career change who's thinking about going back to college and wants to know more about which schools would be a good fit for them. My background is I've worked in undergraduate and graduate admissions. I've also been the director of a college advising office at a small private high school in Montgomery, Alabama. Um, I've also worked as an, um, an international student advisor, a study abroad advisor, and also an academic advisor. So I feel like I bring all of that to the mix um, when thinking about topics on college conversation. Dana. So what we're going to be doing this week, which is a little different than our previous videos, is that we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go interview Nicole because she happens to ha be quite the expert on the topic of transferring admissions and deferring admissions or transferring colleges and deferring admissions. So with that being said, my first question for you, Nicole, is why is this topic so important to you? And more importantly, why is it important to our viewers? Well, it's really important to me because I think that you can get a lot of bang for your buck if you transfer from one school, specifically like a junior college or a community college, to another school. But you have to be really careful about how you do that. Um, if you're not wise about how you do it, you don't follow a transfer plan or don't know exactly how one class is going to transfer towards your degree at the other school, you can actually lose a lot of money. And that might just be in the form of classes that you're taking that you don't need that won't transfer or the loss of financial aid or scholarship opportunities that you forego because you didn't enroll somewhere as a freshman and you chose to transfer. So I think transferring is a great option for students especially right now, given what's going on with the coronavirus. But you really need to do your homework and make sure that it is the best choice for you, both you know, academically and financially. Great. So I guess one of the questions that I know a lot of families oftentimes have is, when they're thinking about whether or not transferring is gonna be the right choice for them, either planning that as part of their high school experience or they've decided they've started college and realized that maybe they're not in the right college for them at this point or their career interests have changed or their academic interests have changed. So I would like to know first if you can tell us about what does a student need to know in order to find out if their classes will transfer to the school that they plan to graduate from. Um, so if you could talk a little bit about that, that would be really helpful because that's, I know a lot of people want to make sure that the work they've done before matches what's going to be coming down the pipeline. Definitely. So I think the big kind of blanket answer to all of that is you need to talk to the admission counselor or the transfer coordinator for the school that you're interested in transferring to. Um, that school is going to know or that counselor is going to know if there is already something called an articulation agreement between the school you're attending and the school that you want to go to. That agreement lines up how classes transfer, what transfers, and how many classes transfer. They're going to know the transfer policies that will apply to you and can also connect you to somebody else who might have a wealth of information, whether it's in the school, so like the School of Communications that you want to transfer into, or um, maybe they'll connect you with the registrar or somebody else who can help you evaluate your transcript from the school that you're currently attending. It's also really important to look at both schools' websites to understand what that transfer process is going to look like. Sometimes the school has, within that articulation agreement, a crosswalk. And that crosswalk outlines classes that you can take, for example, at Austin Community College that will then transfer to University of Texas at Austin. That's a big kind of transfer community here in the San Antonio, Austin area. Um, so I'll be using that university as my example for today. But the nice thing about Austin Community College and University of Texas at Austin is they have that crosswalk outlined and you can see exactly what class applies to um, what class at Austin Community College applies to University of Texas at Austin and how that will transfer over. So it gives you a two year plan to follow through on and just kind of measure your progress as you're working towards that ultimate transfer to your four year college or university. 
for a student who is transferring from one school to another, and maybe they didn't anticipate that they were going to be transferring, maybe you changed your degree or kind of your interest area and you're finding that the college that you're enrolled in right now doesn't offer what you're interested in studying, that's going to be a little more um, piecemeal. So you're going to need to reach out to that admission counselor, transfer coordinator, and talk to them about your transcript. They'll probably ask that you send a copy of your current transcript to see what you've taken. And then they're going to work with the registrar's office, or they're going to ask that you work with the registrar's office to make a determination about what will and won't transfer. Sometimes that process even gets passed out to you know, the departments where those classes are taught on your future college campus. And then that department makes the determination about whether or not the class you took at the university that you want to transfer from, whether or not that fulfills the requirements of the class at the college or university that you're wanting to transfer to. Whew, there's a lot of colleges and universities. I'm using a lot of repeated words there. So hopefully that was clear. Yeah. So in the particular case where I've known that in, in my situation, I've had some students ask this question, but why do some classes transfer and others don't? How can a student know very early on whether they're in a position of knowing they're walking in and they know that they're not interested in staying beyond a two-year associate's degree or they walk in and within a few weeks or months they know I want to transfer. And how are they going to know that some of those classes can transfer and how do they differentiate the ones that don't? That's kind of tough. So um, kind of going to your first question about why do some classes transfer and why don't some classes transfer, I mean you have to think about what does a university produce? A university produces a graduate and that graduate has followed a specific path of classes and content in order to earn that degree. The university then puts its stamp of approval on it saying that yes, this is indicative of you know, college X's ability to produce graduates in political science. Another thing you need to think about is that those degrees are all accredited either by a national accreditation agency or a regional accreditation agency. And in order to achieve that accreditation, those classes, those degrees, and those departments all have to meet certain benchmarks and fulfill certain requirements. So if you take a class from another university and plug it in to a new university's degree requirements, they really need to make sure that the class that they're plugging in in the place of one of theirs actually fulfills the requirements that you would have met had you taken that class at your new university. So it can be kind of tough to determine whether or not a class will transfer, but that's why it's good to communicate often and early with your transfer coordinator, figure out who reviews your classes as you're taking them and get an agreement as you're going through, you know, finishing up that set of classes that you're currently in, getting an understanding and an agreement about what will and won't transfer so that you know what you're walking into your, uni your new university with. I wish that I could say that for every university, it is clear cut and clearly defined what will and won't transfer. But ultimately it is up to the university that you're transferring into to determine whether or not they're going to accept the class that you're bringing with you. They don't have to accept it because of those accreditation standards. Um, and some universities are going to be more stringent about standards you know, overall, or they may be more stringent about standards within specific programs. So nursing programs can be difficult to transfer into Sometimes business programs can be difficult to transfer into. Just depends upon the university that you're wanting to transfer to and the classes that you're trying to transfer. A general rule of thumb, I would say, is it's probably easier to transfer non-major credits. So just your general um, overall credits that you need to take towards your degree, not your major specific requirements because those get very, very tight and very specific based on what that college is you know, curriculum for a political science major or whatever it is, um, are. So for students who are now, particularly the ones that are in high school, who are, have graduated, congratulations, um, and want to go ahead and had plans to go to, head to a specific college, uh, whether it's locally or nationally or even abroad, things are so different than they were before. How do you go ahead to set up a plan to defer to college, which is, and, and if you could explain what deferment is just a little bit to our viewers who might not be sure of that. And the second part of the question is, once you decide if deferring is an option for you and you go an academic route, 
can you take classes at another college and then have them transfer over to the college you were originally going to attend, but don't because of situations that make you want to defer? Yeah, that's a complicated question. It's a complicated answer as well. So let me um, make sure that I get to the first part and then the second part. If I miss something, please let me know. Um, so I realize with the coronavirus and everything that's happening right now, you may not want to go to the school that you were originally attending or intending to go to, just given the nature of the situation we're finding ourselves in. Or like you said, if you were admitted to a school abroad, so like St. Andrews University in the United Kingdom, um, but maybe you can't go there, right? There's currently a travel warning. I guess Scotland isn't in the EU, um, but maybe the UK will have a travel warning against the United States and prohibit people from traveling to the United States because of the outbreak that we're having here. Um, you need to, again, contact that admission office that admitted you to find out what is the deferral process like. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the deferral process, a deferral is where you've been admitted to a school and you accept your offer of admission to attend that university or college. But then you say, I want to accept my place. However, I want to wait and I want to attend the college next year. I want to take a break between high school and college, but I would still like to attend your school. Can you hold my place for me? A school can decide whether or not they want to do this. Um, I would hedge my bets and say most schools are willing to do that if that's something that you want to do, but they're going to have rules for what you can and can't do during that deferral. And some of those rules might include not enrolling at another college or university and taking classes because then you wouldn't be a true freshman when you enroll that following year after your deferment is over. Um, they may say that's perfectly fine, but that is up to the college that you want to attend um, to make the determination about whether or not they would allow you to take classes at another college or university, and then if you can transfer those classes in. So that's kind of the second layer, I think, to your question is how do you know if your classes are going to transfer? Work, again, with that admission counselor or the transfer coordinator, but you can also talk to the department and the registrar to show them the classes that you're considering taking and ask if they feel that they would be equivalent and could transfer to the college where you're seeking that deferment. Um, so there's a couple, you know, a couple of layers. First, you want to find out whether or not you can get a deferral. Then you want to find out if during your time of deferral, if you can go ahead and take classes at another college or university. And then once you get that approval, then you can go and find out who you would need to talk to to make sure that the classes you're planning on taking would transfer at the end of your year-long deferral. And I realize I'm talking about year-long deferrals right now, but universities and colleges like the University of Maryland sometimes offer one semester deferrals too. So maybe it's that you defer just until the spring semester to arrive on campus. That might look a little bit different for you, but the admission counselor at that college or university where you're seeking the deferral, they can tell you what that process will look like. More traditionally, students who are seeking a deferral are going and doing a gap year program somewhere, could be in the United States or could be abroad. Maybe they have a job or a research project that they're really interested in that they wanna focus at one year time on, or maybe they need to stay home for health reasons, family reasons, those kinds of things where you know, the university understands you've got things that are going on right now that will resolve in a certain amount of time and they're gonna hold on to your spot for next year to enable you to attend when you know, you're able to focus your attention back on your college degree. Typically with the deferral, a college or university will allow you to hold on to the scholarships that you may have received during that year as well. So that is a nice thing about deferring. Um, again, that's up to the university to decide whether or not they can or will do that. However, one of the reasons why you wanna ask whether or not you can take classes while you're on your deferral year or semester is if you take those classes and you intend to transfer them in, do those classes then make you a transfer student? If they make you a transfer student, then you may have to apply to that college or university all over again as a transfer student. And now you're not eligible for freshman financial aid and scholarships, you're eligible for transfer financial aid and scholarships. And sometimes those can be two very different buckets of financial aid that can vary drastically in terms of the amount of aid you're able to get for your scholarships. So that's why it's so important to ask, can you defer? If you can defer, 
can you take classes while you are on your deferral year? And then, you know, how do they transfer in and figuring out what that would look like? Did that answer your question? Did I get everything? Yes, it definitely did. I think the, I think just one of the little like nuances that would be helpful is if I know that I want to begin the process of deferring my admission because it's either, you know, for reasons that are dealing with the virus, you're not comfortable going to another city, um, health reasons, uh, religious reasons, going on a mission or going, you know, to Israel and studying, yep. just all the different places. How does one begin the process of asking for a deferral? Uh, what, at what time of the year do they do that? And um, is, it, is there anything about that process that's very, very special that we should know about? I would say as soon as you know which college or university you want to attend, so the one where you're going to submit your deposit and you go through that whole summer process of registering for classes, once you know which college or university that is, contact them to find out if there is a deferral opportunity and how you would work through that process with them. Um, well, I mean, I kind of also want to find out what you feel about that. I mean, do you feel like it's advisable for a student to ask multiple colleges and universities what their deferral process is like and if they offer it, because I do understand that maybe that would affect a student's decision about whether or not to attend a college or university. What do you think from your professional perspective? I think in previous years, deferral, like de to get a deferral wasn't very difficult. I do know that there are some schools that are out there who have said they do not plan on providing deferrals for academic reasons. Um, only if you have a health issue that has just come up, um, even it could be related to COVID-19, it could be unrelated to it, or you're going and asking for a deferral for religious purposes. There are many students who, um, you know, who will go ahead on different missions and that's part of their religious obligation. There are students who will go and do particular levels of studying, which is part of the religious obligation. And in those particular cases, I know there are colleges that are willing to grant them. But in this day and age, if you're saying to a university, I do know there's a few out there that are coming back to say, unless you're doing a religious or you have a health reason, we're not offering the deferral. So I think that this year is a little different. My experience happens to be in the years past that generally most people will consider a deferral um, and it exactly is oftentimes, especially if you're doing something academic in nature, enrichment is, is well looked upon. But I think now it's really important to do like what you said, which is before you even sometimes commit to a school, you have to ask, are they allowing deferments? Um, so that way you're able to make a, the most kind of well-rounded decision that you can make because you don't want to have a plan in your head of I'm going to take a deferral and travel or take classes and then find out the school you want to go to doesn't, isn't going to permit it. And so that involves a lot more planning and, and changing up your original idea. Definitely. Yeah, when I worked as an undergraduate admission counselor, there was a student who knew from the get-go that he was going to need to defer his admission because he was going to do um, like a mission trip, a year-long mission trip abroad. Um, so in that case, you just go in telling your admission counselors that that is what your plans are, that's what it's looking like, and you work through the admission process with them fully well knowing um, what their deferral process is like, and they know also that you're going to defer. So it can start as early as, you know, the application process starts, which is August, July of the start of your senior year. But it can also, like I think in this year, maybe some students are wondering now, given all that's going on with COVID-19, um, if they can seek a deferral. So I think it, I guess it depends upon what your situation is calling for. And, and as like a kind of final question to kind of wrap up, do you recommend for students who fully planned on going to their local community college or going to their local college or a college somewhere else in the country, do you recommend that they do think about deferment or if they're starting to be concerned about traveling or they're too concerned about the, how the university is handling a situation, do you, how would, a, would, would you recommend or how would you recommend for a student or family member to kind of think about this process? Is that something where they could call you or, um, and be able to just have like a meeting? How would that work? What's the best way to kind of first tackle things? Yeah, absolutely. Anybody is welcome to call me. My phone number will pop up. My email will pop up um, after we're done with this session today. But I also feel like, right, information is power. And so the best information that you can get is calling the college or the university, 
finding out what their processes are going to be for this coming fall and asking yourself, is that something that I'm comfortable with? Um, if it is something that you're comfortable with, if that, you know, you want to be on campus, maybe they're doing a hybrid option where, you know, for large classes, you're doing everything from your dorm room. For small seminar classes where they can spread you out, they're doing everything in person, but maybe with a mask requirement. If that's in your comfort zone, then maybe, you know, great, go ahead. You don't need to defer as long as that's comfortable to you. If what you're hearing isn't comfortable for you, then ask them, you know, is there a deferral process? Is, you know, what are my options here? Do they have transfer agreements already set up with different colleges or universities? Maybe you consider going to a local community college that has that transfer agreement with the college or university that you intend to attend in the future. Maybe that community college is offering online classes. So you could take your classes from your home, perhaps where you are right now. So then you wouldn't have to move into that new community um, but can take those classes that then will eventually transfer to the college or school that you intend to get your four-year degree from. Um, so yes, I absolutely am happy to talk with families through those steps. And then also I'm always going to say, you know, let's get the best information possible from the source, which would be the college or university. Great. While we're talking about kind of um, colleges and universities and those crosswalks and those transfers, do I have a moment to show students and families what a crosswalk transfer agreement looks like? We'll give you two minutes. All right, sounds yeah. good. Okay, I don't want to bust the 20 minute mark. Well, we're a little over it, but we're okay. I think I, we're in charge. I think we can go ahead and, and make a little, uh, push the boundaries a little. A little executive call, okay. Yeah, we're okay. So I'm sharing my screen. This is Austin Community College's University Information for Transfer Guides and Course Equivalencies. So if you're trying to figure out whether or not a class will transfer or if there's a transfer agreement for a college or university, you want to search for transfer guides, course equivalencies, and it will pull up if they have something like that available. Here specifically is the University of Texas at Austin's Office of Admission Transfer Guide for Austin Community College students. So you can see the automated transfer equivalencies. So you can plug in course information to find out if it will transfer. I like that they have common transfer credit issues as well, but they also break down each guide into the various colleges and schools that UT Austin has. So you can find out exactly what classes are going to transfer, say if you were going to be a communication student. It just downloads straight to your desktop and you can follow that while you're at ACC. Lastly, this is the course catalog, which is another resource for students seeking to understand what transfer admission would look like. If you go to the catalog, there's going to be transfer requirements if they offer transfer admissions. Not every, every school or university is going to allow for transfer admissions. That's another thing that we have to think about. But internal transfer, that's if you were to transfer from one school to another within the University of Texas at Austin. What we've been talking about today is external transfer. And so you can see that they need you to complete certain courses, you need to have a certain GPA in order to transfer. And then there are also recommended courses for specific um, schools. So for example, the McComb, McComb School of Business, they want you to take rhetoric and writing 306. So you, all this information is available to students and families. Um, you just have to seek it out on the university's website in the course catalog and by looking for a transfer guide or um, agreement. Great. All right. Oh. Thank you so much. I think this was like the perfect amount of information and the perfect amount of time. Um, it's very obvious you have a wealth of knowledge when it comes to this. Um, so basically, any, anything necessary to wrap up or do you want to go ahead and just let people know how to find you, how to find me and send them along their way? Um, well, let's let them know how to find you and me. Um, and then just generally speaking to wrap up, transferring is great. I think it's a wonderful option. Um, just make sure you're really doing your homework and you're understanding kind of what you're gaining and what you're losing. Do the math, crunch the numbers, and look at what the cost benefits would be as well. So it's totally possible and it can work out great for you as long as you've got all of your decks lined up in a row. All right, so I'm going to share the screen again. So this is how you can contact Dana and myself. 
So you can reach me at 210-596-9567 or Nicole at WahlbergCC.com. And you can follow me at consultwithdana.com. You'll see my number as well as my email. And feel free to reach out to Nicole or to me at any time and we can answer some initial questions that you have or find time to set up some longer time for us to help see how we can support you through the transfer admissions process or the deferment process as well. We hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again for next week's series when I get to be the one who's interviewed. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.